Ronaldo, I have something to tell you. Yes? Is it about Ramon? Well, no. Well, then what is it? I'm pregnant. Is the child mine? We interrupt this program to bring you this special announcement. This just in to the Site Files breaking news. A new scientific survey has determined what we already know, that satisfied workers are more productive. Yes, a survey of over 1,000 employees proves that the more satisfied you are, the more productive you are as well. To better understand this relationship, we have this special graphic, which clearly shows how satisfied workers are more productive. Chuck, can we have that graphic, please? And there you go. Satisfied workers, more productive. Now, we also have two experts available via satellite to help us discuss these results. From Dublin, Ireland, we go to Professor Ben Hepner. Dr. Hepner, I assume you agree with these amazing findings. Oh, no, Michael. The conclusions are completely wrong. Uh, uh they are? Well, perhaps you could explain. Oh, now it's easy to explain. Just think about the times when you've been on the job and you've been productive. Makes you feel satisfied, doesn't it? Well, yes. Um, when I'm productive, I am more satisfied at work. That's true. Oh, there you go. Productive workers are more satisfied. Okay. <laughs> well, uh, Chuck, can we correct that fantastic graphic of yours? <laughs> Fine. There we go. Now everything is much more clear. Productive workers, more satisfied. Thank you, Chuck. And thank you, Dr. Hepner, for clearing up the confusion over this study's amazing findings. Now we go to our other expert, Dr. Franz Helmholtz in Vienna, Austria. Dr. Helmholtz, I assume you agree with Dr. Hepner's interpretation of the findings of this survey. No, he is completely wrong on this point. I see. Well, uh, uh, perhaps you could explain why you think so. There is a third factor at work here, which you don't see so much. When you measure the employee's talents or the capabilities, and you match them to the job, then the employee is both productive and, because he's using these talents, he is satisfied. All right, then. That uh, certainly makes sense, too. Uh, Chuck, need to update the graphic. Well, now, as you can see, nothing could be more clear now than the results of this survey. <laughs> and that's all from this breaking news announcement from the Site Files podcast. about your jail sentence. I don't care about my jail sentence. I love you. Well, there's always your brother. We interrupt this program to bring you this special announcement. This just in to the Site Files News Desk. A new survey has confirmed what we have all long suspected, that living together before marriage causes divorce. As you can see here in this survey, question number three asks subjects, have they lived together before getting married? The next question asks them whether or not they've ever gotten a divorce. And now, as you can see from this specially prepared graphic, respondents who said yes, they lived together with their partner before marriage, were also likely to have said yes, they have been divorced. Well, there you have it, folks. Real scientific data confirming our suspicions. And now we turn to our consultant in matters such as this, Dr. Franz Helmholtz from Austria. Dr. Helmholtz, I assume you agree with the findings of this survey. No, this is completely wrong. Well, I don't know about that, Professor. It seems pretty clear to us here in the studio. Uh, can you tell us how you arrived at this uh, surprising conclusion? Well, you see, it's quite possible that it is the divorce which is causing the living together. Well, I don't know how that could be, Professor, because as we all know, one usually does live together before getting a marriage and before then getting divorced. 
Yes, this is true, but in this case, the survey simply asks whether or not you have lived together, and then whether or not you have ever been divorced. But this does not mean that one necessarily happens before the other. It's quite possible that those who have gotten married and the marriage doesn't work out decide from then on that they will live together. Thus, getting a divorce causes the living together. Well, uh, that certainly does make sense. Well, uh, perhaps we need to update that graphic of ours. Uh, Chuck, could we see the new graphic? <laughs> no, Chuck. Well, there you have it, folks. Couldn't be more clear. Either living together causes divorce, or divorce causes living together, or some other factor causes the two. <laughs> well, um, it's a good thing we didn't uh, jump to conclusions. <laughs> and there you go for this week's breaking news. Are we out? You know, I didn't understand a word of that. We now return you to your regularly scheduled program, already in progress. Join us again tomorrow for another episode of Cafe Diaries. <laughs>